Hey, welcome to Midas Letter Live. My guest in this segment is none other than Cam Batley, Chief Corporate Officer for Aurora Cannabis Inc. Cam, welcome back. Nice to see you, James. Cam, you guys have been on fire in both directions, and it's been very entertaining that, that to watch. That sounds actually pretty unhealthy. Well, <laughs> but, you know, burning the candle at both ends. We've been very busy. It articulates a brilliant lifestyle. So. What's happening with the med relief takeover? Where are we at on a lot? Uh, it's going fast, uh, much faster than the, the Canamed uh, integration. And the Canamed integration, um, I'm very pleased to say, we got completed in the targeted 90-day period. Hmm. We have an amazing head of integration and a great in integration team. Our head of integration, Andre Jerome, uh, ironically, we got him via acquisition when we acquired a company hmm. in La Chute, Quebec, called H2 Biopharma, which is soon to be our Aurora O, uh, French for water facility in La Chute. When we acquired that company, we got Andre Jerome with it, uh, hmm. and he is our senior VP of integration, and he's doing a splendid job. So we've completed the integration of Canamed in the uh, prescribed period. We're now moving on, having closed uh, med relief to doing exactly the same thing there, and that will be a much faster process, I think. The cultures are so similar. The companies have a real affinity for each other, and, and if you recall, we spoke before about the fact that uh, across the entire Canadian cannabis sector, there were no two companies that were really so similar in their outlook with respect to uh, the markets, in, uh, with respect to our production and uh, cultivation technologies. Sure, amazing. Okay, um, then, you know, never mind med relief. The med relief thing oh, seems to Oh, don't say never, never mind med relief, because well, they're I doing mean, really, really well. It's now, it's now Aurora. <laughs> it is, it is, but that, that, uh, that portion of Aurora uh, that, that we've now just closed on, mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm getting word that, that they're doing exceedingly well, mm. uh, that, that sales are, are really on fire. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, when we report our uh, year end, which uh, will be around or about uh, the 25th of September, we won't actually have uh, consolidated uh, the uh, med relief results in, uh, but I think we'll probably do a pro forma to give people a good idea as to where uh, Aurora plus Canamed plus med relief are doing. Sure. What was Aurora up to developmentally before you made the takeover bid? Like they had their own growth and you know development strategy underway. Aurora did or med oh, relief? Sorry, med relief. Okay, yeah. So it, you know it's funny because um, I, I've uh, I've been reflecting on the fact that if we had waited just a little bit longer to make a bid for med relief. I don't think we could have afforded them. Um, they're hitting some pretty key inflection points right now, uh, both domestically and internationally. So you'll recall that not too long ago, uh, they got clearance, uh, their provisional clearance, to start selling into uh, Germany. Mm -hmm. And um, so you can imagine that's, that's a significant catalyst uh, for, right. for, um, for them. For us so this is now. another channel for Aurora. Another in the channel, another channel, and and it's such a good channel because, as you know, they they pay a premium price uh, for cannabis flower for dried bud mm -hmm. uh, compared to uh, Canada, uh, given the currency differences. Sure. And that's before we st we get into the value added products, which are you know a few weeks away. We're a few weeks away from being able to ship our oils, our cannabis oils, into Germany. Okay. And once again, those will get a premium price. So this is a this is a pretty exciting time. The fall's gonna be very nice. Yeah, what is the status of the rules in Germany in terms of recreational and medical? At this point, there's only about 20,000 patients in all of Germany, which implies that there's a huge opportunity there with 80 million uh, residents. Yeah, it's growing very, very quickly. The demand is significant, and thus far, uh, it's unquenchable. So mm. uh, there are basically only a handful of Canadian companies that have European Union uh, GMP, Good Manufacturing Practices, certification, who are able to sell in there. And also, there's one company in the Netherlands, Bedrican BV, uh, that's been selling into Germany for some time. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's not much competition. There is huge demand. Uh, and I suspect that the, uh, the, the population uh, in Germany using prescription cannabis is going to grow even faster than we've seen in Canada because most of them, uh, more than two-thirds, are getting insurance reimbursement for that. Mm. Now imagine how much faster the Canadian system, which has been on a blistering pace for the last four years, would have grown if there had been broad insurance uh, coverage. Mm -hmm. So very, very exciting market. And then beyond that, of course, through our German um, uh, division, Pedanios, uh, this is the distributor that we acquired last year, we're also selling into Italy and now Malta with its Massive population of 400,000 or so, well, um, but it's another important market for sure. us, and uh, and and so we're we're pretty excited about the the future in Europe. That will always be uh, an excellent market because of the uh, you know Canadian style reliance on on 
quite a lot of regulation and therefore high barriers to entry. Right. Is Padanios the largest distributor of cannabis in Germany? By volume, we believe it is the, the largest distributor of medical cannabis in Europe, as a matter and of fact. And so now with the MedRelief distribution channel, you'll be hands down the largest provider of medical cannabis in Germany. That's exactly the way we see it. And, uh, and it's pretty exciting. And it, it brings us back to some decisions that we have to make as a company, and that's the product allocation. Because across, uh, you know, uh, Aurora plus Canamed plus MedRelief, mm -hmm. we have quite a large number of Canadian patients, and we've made it very, very clear that they will always come first. They uh, they get the first product allocation. Um, then we have the Canadian consumer system, and of course, we're going to be selling into uh, all the provinces uh, um, retail systems. And then we've got, of course, these international markets, which are so exciting, and. And we're, we're moving fast. We have a real sense of urgency to establish our presence, get boots on the ground, create that infrastructure in country after country because we know where we're going. We want to we wanna be, we wanna be a, a very, very large global company. And that's, yeah. that's the direction we're headed in. So I'm, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to take this opportunity just to uh, pull up the, the intercorporate relationships of Aurora right now because I look at this thing and I try to wrap my head around it, and then I look at all the people selling Aurora stock and saying, wait, you fools, there's so much more going on here. I actually have a cheat sheet. Oh, do you? <laughs> yes, well, I we do. have a cheat sheet too, because yeah. anytime anybody asks us about what are all the corporate relationships, I just hold up the sheet and go, you want me to start a, you know, a three-hour yeah. There's a lot of value in there. Yeah, so then um, in terms of the, you know, let's talk about, let's start, let's start at the top, uh, Alcana. Alcana. Yeah. Um, so our partners, uh, we own 25% of Alcana, formerly Liquor Stores North America, the largest private liquor retailer in Canada. Right. Uh, and um, I've been huddling more and more uh, with the management team over there. This is a very, very strong management team. This is a very competent group of people, and I'm very excited about what we're going to be doing. So we're establishing Aurora branded stores that are operated by uh, Alcana. Uh, and uh, this this is this is going to uh, prove to be a very very beneficial partnership to both parties. I'm excited about that. Yeah, no doubt. Well, you then, can ask so, me about Ontario. Sorry, you can ask me about Ontario. Well, <laughs> sounds like I am. <laughs> tell, tell me about Ontario. Well, you've heard the rumors. Um, uh, it's been um, you know it's been swirling around the media that uh, the anticipation is that Ontario will move away from the prior anticipated system mm -hmm. of, uh, of you know, government monopoly to a, a system of private cannabis retail, right. uh, which I think would be absolutely the right thing to do for a whole host of reasons. Um, but we'll obviously wait and see what the framework looks like. But sure. um, if, if allowed, we certainly will be in there in a heartbeat and, and pretty darn excited about it in the largest market in Canada. Yeah, no doubt. Um, okay, so then Besides, you know, Alcana, I'm looking over the list here, and uh, you know, let's talk a bit about T God. One of our, one of our, yes. uh, one of our viewers, who's also a bit of an influencer himself, Jason Spatafora, better known as the Wolf of Weed Street, uh, is has a question. Is and and he's asking if Aurora did eventually take over T God, would T God's energy deal with Eaton and other power companies be applied to Aurora's existing facilities? Just a bit of a loaded question. I suspect Jason is, might be a bit of a shareholder of there's, God. There's uh, a couple layers of uh, <laughs> hypotheticals. Yeah, on there. there is, isn't uh, there? If and would. Um, well, um, certainly we'd be open to it mm -hmm. in that circumstance. I mean, it's it's hard to, to go down that path in, in terms of hypotheticals mm -hmm. um, because that all lies in the future. All the decision making lies in the future. Uh, for now, we're pleased with what T God's doing and, and with their progress uh, and uh, and with their capital structure. Uh, we just think that they're doing a very good job. They seem to be moving very very quickly on the construction front, mm -hmm. uh, and we can't wait to have access to that organic cannabis because remember we have an offtake agreement with them. Right. Um, so I'm very very pleased with that partnership as well. Well, fantastic, uh, Hector. And, no and by the way, I need to to add. Um, the, uh, the the new CEO uh, Brian uh, Athide mm -hmm. uh, of T God, formerly this the CFO, um, really really sharp guy. Uh, I spent uh, a fair bit of time with him in recent days, and and I am impressed. Okay, um, interesting. Did uh, Hector Lopez, who's one of our viewers on Facebook, wants to ask has. If integrating the three companies, Aurora, Kahneman, and MedRelief, has been a challenging experience, and he'd like an overview of how each acquisition will add to the company's culture and bottom line. Oh, great questions. Absolutely, really. Uh, um, so, first thing, uh, has it been a challenge? 
Yeah, it's fair to call it a challenge, but not a problem. Uh, so what we've done, effectively, we've turned integration into a core competency at Aurora, and we needed to do that because mm. we've completed 10 acquisitions in the last two years, and that's in addition to roughly the same number of strategic partnerships that we've established where we've made strategic investments in partners like Radiant Technologies and Hempco, which we now uh, uh, majority control, and TGOD and Can Group uh, in Australia and others. So integration is uh, is a core competency at Aurora, and I'm, I'm pleased to say, as indicated earlier, that's going really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, we've gotten good at that. Um, in addition, uh, when you talk about culture, that's that's critical. You know, Warren Buffett has spoken a lot about the the importance of culture, and it's often overlooked. And it's not soft; it's actually hard. It's it's one of the critical skills is to establish and maintain. Uh, a strong corporate culture. And we've put a lot of very specific effort into that at Aurora. Now, it's a playful uh, culture. We had our, um, our annual all-employee meeting um, a few weeks ago in Edmonton. And it, it was really quite astonishing because the previous year, we had around 200 people in a hotel ballroom. This time, we had 700 of our, uh, at, at that point, 1,000 global employees. Now it's 1,200 post-Medrelief. Mm all in a very, very big room at the Shaw Conference Center in Edmonton. And I've never seen, I've never seen a vibe like that in a company before. And I've done you know, uh, events like this around the world with you know, big pharmaceutical companies and small biotech companies, medical device companies, and so on. I've never felt a vibe quite like that. It was so positive, so focused. Uh, a feeling that what we're doing is not just uh, you know, good from a business perspective, but actually valuable and right from a social perspective. And a sense that we get to play a, a key role in changing the world for the better. So positive uh, and, and so reflective of that kind of unique hybrid culture of ours uh, with you know, people from mature industries and people who come from the cannabis culture mm -hmm. coming together. Uh, incredibly harmoniously and learning from each other. It's really, really cool. Hmm. So, so far, all three companies have sort of been able to play well together, sort of thing? Yep, and, okay. and you know, it's, um, it, as we grow, and we've been growing really, really quickly, and, and huge kudos to our HR department for making that happen uh, so seamlessly, we're self-selecting, uh, or, or rather people who join Aurora are self-selecting. They tend to be uh, uh, aggressive, uh, they tend to like uh, the fast pace, uh, and they tend to have a degree of w what I could only characterize as a kind of a practical idealism. And, and once again, that circles back to uh, the culture that, mm -hmm. that we're building here. And not just in Canada. Uh, we had our, our teams from all over Europe um, and, and actually other parts of the world come to that all-employee meeting. And they all spoke uh, and they all got you know, the ovations and, right. and we're thrilled for everything they're doing. But it doesn't matter what country they come from, that culture crosses borders and it does so beautifully. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so um, there's here's a tough question for you. Okay. And I'm just going to throw this at you because I know you can take it. All right. You, you're going <laughs> to you're gonna give me a, something to well, stre if, strengthen my if, coffee. If I, if I see you turn pale, then I'll quickly <laughs> throw a shot in there. Mike Johnson, a viewer on Facebook, wants to know, mm -hmm. he'd like a comment as to why the stock has declined so much while the company continues to make what seems like positive announcements. Um, not just positive announcements, uh, we're exactly where we need to be with the capabilities that we need to have at exactly the right time. So that's my opening comment on that. But let's speak directly to the share price. What we're seeing right now is a couple of things. I think one is um, risk capital has gone to the cottage uh, for the summer. The and Muskoka effect. We, yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and we've actually, uh, we're seeing something that was very similar uh, to uh, last year. Mm -hmm. So last uh, summer, Aurora's stock was, and, and actually the sector, uh, was a little bit soft, lower volumes uh, through the summer, and then picked up and then really started to run in the fall. Um, so I think that's part of it. There's a, another part of it too. We just are digesting a massive um, acquisition, med relief. Right. And uh, my sense is that some of those med uh, relief shareholders, some of the larger shareholders there, have been seeking liquidity. So you know they may be uh, holding us back a little bit. And once that's through, uh, I expect that the pressure will be taken off the stock. Sure. So they view this event as an exit strategy for them, which they might be leaving a lot of money on the table, by my understanding. Because if we talk about the Australis transaction that oh, is going on laterally to what's happening yeah. here, it seems to me that there is an opportunity to get a free ride in the US market on the heels of one of the most 
powerful and dynamic cannabis companies in the world. So uh, I'm really proud of, of what we've put together with respect to Australis Capital Corporation, which of course is our uh, divestment of our U.S. assets, but it's a heck of a lot more than that. We're spinning uh, this company off to our shareholders. So each of our shareholders, as of the record date, I don't have that just yet, but it'll be shortly, um, will receive a share and a warrant uh, in uh, Australis Capital Corporation. So we have to make sure that it is completely separate from us mm -hmm. uh, in order to satisfy the TSX mm -hmm. and uh, a future U.S. listing. Right. Um, we, we have to make sure that it's completely separate, and that's what we're doing. We, we are going to have a separate uh, management, separate board, separate operations, um, but with a pedigree from Aurora, and uh, they are like our offspring. So we're pushing the baby bird out of the nest and it's going to fly. But it's going to uh, have access to the capital that Aurora does. It's going to have the backing of management, the expertise of, for example, Larson Greenhouses, should they decide to take that stuff over? No connection, no direct connection between the companies. We have to maintain it that way and we will religiously. But mm -hmm. it does have that pedigree and they, you know, it will have access to our knowledge, our brains, contacts and stuff like that. Sure. Um, and the idea is to snap up attractive uh, assets in the U.S. A very, very fragmented market, but with some incredible gems. So we want to snap up those assets and make them sing in the U.S. and elsewhere. Um, and and that's what Australis is is all about. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a pretty exciting move. I'm, I'm glad that we're able to do that for our shareholders because we're able to give them effectively a dividend. We're going to wrap it there. Thanks very much for coming in today. My pleasure.